From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ready with your call to Hartford, Mr. Dollar. Thanks, operator. Go ahead, Hartford. Hello? Johnny? Yeah, Pete. A big, fat expense account, and you still reverse the call. Had to. I'm phoning from a crossroads store. Look, I need a quick fact or two in connection with the Ellen Bates murder. That $10,000 policy on Ellen's life. When was it written, Pete? Oh, around four years ago. I'll get the exact date if you want to hang on. No, no, that's close enough. I was hoping it was only a year or two back. Knocks a pet theory in the head, huh? No, but it doesn't help it any. Hey, is there also a policy on the life of Ben Bates? Yeah, same amount, taken out at the same time, right after they were married. Add up to anything? A nice round zero. What do the local authorities think? The only local authority in Shady Lane is sitting outside in the car right now, and he thinks the same as I do. Which is what? We're both stumped. I'll be talking to you. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Shady Lane, Vermont, to the Home Office Star Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Shady Lane matter. Expense account continued. Item four, seven cents, a copy of the Shady Lane Weekly Crier, the paper that prints the folksy news, according to the masthead. Maybe it would help, because the whole case seemed to have a folksy flavor. A young farm wife named Ellen Bates, a semi-invalid without a known enemy in the township, had been shot to death a month before. The killer, unidentified. Motive, unknown. Physical evidence, non-existent. Leads, none. I rejoined Constable Jed Bramler in the car and glanced over the paper as we drove onto the Bates farm. I'd begun to realize that, folksy or not, the Bates case was probably going to be tougher than an old boot. Now, we'll, uh, we'll leave the car here at the road and walk up through the draw. I'll show you how it happened. All right, good. This sure doesn't look like very good farmland. Uh-uh, no, no, it ain't. Ben's got a few good acres north of the house, but most of it's like this. Won't grow much of anything except in rocks. Takes a lot of scratching to make a go of a place like this. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. And it would be even tougher if you had to take care of an invalid wife at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I reckon it would. Uh, watch yourself on that barbed wire, Mr. Dollar. All right. Uh, there's easier ways to get into the house, but I figured you'd like to see how the killer got away. And this is it, you think, huh? He fired the shot from cover and then... Oh, she did. All right, whichever. And then he or she ran back down this draw here and got away. Yeah, must have been seen otherwise. But here in the draw, a person would be out of sight from both houses. Either the Bates place or the Preenies over on the other side. I'll buy that one, all right. This brush is thick enough to hide a herd of cattle. Yeah. Well, once the killer got to the road, back where we left the car, might have gone any place. Yeah, that's the trouble. This case is too full of mites. Tried to pick up a trail in here. Even brought in dogs. But they didn't turn up nothing. Dogs is mostly overrated anyhow. Yeah, so I've heard. Yeah, let's see now. Ought to be right about here some... Ah, ah, yes, there we are, over that way. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah, I see the stake you put up to mark the place. Nope, it wasn't me that put it up. It's a survey marker, but it's just about where I calculate the shot was fired from. Uh, right about here. What was the survey for, Mr. Bramler? Highway department. They was figuring to build a new turnpike through here last year. Fell through, though. How come? Uh, the whys of a public bureau ain't for mere man to know, Mr. Dollar. They finally picked someplace else a few months ago. Shame, too. Might have made this land worth something to Ben. Another one of those mites, huh? Now, uh, look through the bushes there, just to the left of that big maple. Mm-hmm. That's the corner, the parlor corner of the Bates house. And Ellen was sitting right there in that big front window when it happened. Ben has put the glass back in since. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't have been too difficult a shot from here. Yeah. Them old-fashioned squirrel rifles is mighty accurate. And nearly everybody in the township has one. That's about it. It's not a matter of finding a needle in a straw stack. It's finding one special straw in a straw stack. Mighty hard chore, I'd say. (laughs) So would I. So there she sat, 
An easy target. Alone at her own front window. Well, not exactly alone, Mr. Dollar. Paul? Alone at the window, yes. But Mrs. Preeny was in the room with her at the time. The woman who wrote the anonymous letter accusing Ben Bates? I didn't know that. Yeah, didn't seem to have no bearing. She just happened to be there. Brought over a cake or something from next door. She was always doing things like that for Ellen. Uh-huh. But Mrs. Preeny didn't see who fired the shot. She just heard the window glass crash and saw Ellen come half out of her chair and then fall on the floor. An invalid, helpless, sitting there at a window. Now, what the devil could a woman like that do to make somebody hate her enough to kill her? Mr. Dollar, if I could answer that, I would have somebody locked up by now. If anybody did hate her, of course. Meaning? Maybe hate wasn't the reason. Got a better one? Oh, I'm just supposing. Eh, done quite a bit of that myself. Hey, tell me something, Mr. Bramler. Uh, this waitress at the Shady Lane Cafe, the one Mrs. Preeny made the insinuations about. Millie Wells? Yeah, Millie Wells. Is she pretty? Well, hard to say. Tastes differ. I reckon, though, most anybody would call her pretty, though. Well, what about that gossip Mrs. Preeny was spouting? Is it just a rumor? Or was Ben seeing Millie before his wife was murdered? Hard not to see her. Ain't a very big town. You know what I mean. Did he go out of his way to see her? Oh, stopped in the cafe there once in a while. Cup of coffee, piece of pie. Doing all the cooking at home like he was. He got a mite tired of it, I reckon. Well, what about now? Is he still seeing her? Eats most of his evening meals there. Is that all it amounts to? Well, folks generally agree that there's some interest building up since his wife's death. Well, what about his wife? Did she have any chance at all of getting well? Nope. Not according to the doctors. I see. Mr. Dollar. Yeah? You are barking up that same wrong tree again. Oh, it kind of adds up. Figures lie sometimes. Pretty girl, young and alive, interested maybe. An invalid wife, run-down farm, a $10,000 insurance policy... All facts, true enough. He wouldn't be the first man who went wrong with a setup like that. Ah, uh, not Ben. I told you before, murder just ain't in his nature. Oh, come on. Let's walk on up to the house and talk to him. Wait a minute, one other thing. That anonymous letter Mrs. Preeny sent us. Now, why would she go out of her way to get Ben Bates in trouble? Hard to say. I thought she was a friend of the Bates. Of Mrs. Bates, yes. Ellen. But for some reason, she never has seemed to like Ben very much. I don't know why she done it, Mr. Dollar, but I sure wouldn't put no stock in what she said. It's just her nature. That's all it is. It was late afternoon. Long shadows were beginning to stretch out over the flinty ground. Almost the same time of day that Ellen Bates was killed. Killed by her husband, I was beginning to believe. And yet Constable Jed Bramler swore by Ben, his longtime friend. Human ties, human emotions, just plain folks. And a case that was growing messier and more vague by the hour. Not much sign of life. Well, Ben's in and out. You never know. Sounds like somebody coming around the house. Mm -hmm. Must have been working out in the barn. Always plenty to do on a Flint Rock farm. If you come looking for me... Constable. Ah, how are you, Grody? He said, how are you? I'm fine. I'm just fine. Been around? I I've been working out back, fixing the spread. Yeah, that's fine, Grody. Is Ben here? Ben? No. No, Miss Ben's not here. Know where he is? No, he's not here. Any idea when he'll be back? No. No, he didn't say. You can go in and set, though, if you want, Constable. Maybe we will. Grody, this is Mr. Dollar, Grody Hawkins. How are you, Grody? Oh, I, I'm fine. I'm just fine. Grody does odd jobs for Ben. Some of the other farmers, too. Oh, I see. Were you working here the day Mrs. Bates was killed? Uh, that's a lie. I, I wasn't even near here that day. And anybody that says I was is a liar. Oh? I, I was crew over on the other side of town. We'll uh, go inside and wait, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, all right. See you, Grody. Hmm. Kind of gets excited when he figures he's being accused of something. Yeah. He seems scared of you. Has he been in trouble before? Well, petty stuff, like shooting game out of season. Is he a good shot? Dead shot. Never misses. Fact. 
We waited in the parlor for a while, the room where Ellen Bates had died. Her picture was still over the mantel. A clear-eyed, sober woman, much younger than I'd imagined. The sun gradually set and the light on the picture grew dim, but Ben didn't come back. We gave up finally and drove back to town. I left Bramler at his office and walked down the street to the Shady Lane Cafe to eat dinner. I'll be right with you, sir. No hurry. You'll be cooler if you sit there by the window. Oh, oh, fine. Thanks. <laughs> there were a half a dozen tables in the place, all empty. I was the only customer. The girl was pretty and friendly and fitted the description of Millie Wells. The pot roast is awfully good this evening. I think you'll like it. All right. You've made a sale. You're a stranger in town, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm investigating the murder of Ellen Bates. I see. Are you by any chance Millie Wells? Yes. Then I guess you're the person I'm looking for. You worked very fast. I thought it would take longer. Hmm? Oh, I knew you'd find out, of course, sooner or later, but, but I was hoping Ben and I would have a little time together first. I see. We were fools to expect it, though. <laughs> Once you've been tagged, you don't have a chance. Did Ellen Bates have a chance? I didn't give her the slightest cause to worry. I didn't let Ben know once how I felt. Not until after she'd been killed. That was very considerate of you. And I know he didn't give me one thought as long as she was alive. It's not in his nature. So I've heard. Doesn't it mean anything at all when a person has been acquitted? Acquitted? Acquitted of what? Of murder. What else? Isn't that why... Oh, I thought you knew. I thought that's what you... I guess maybe you'd better tell me about it, Millie. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a sudden twist and a cool threat. A strange revelation. And the lies come thick and fast. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Mm-hmm.